Hey guys, this is Will from the Running Injury Free Revolution. So in this video, we're just going to be having a look at showing you exactly how to run up a hill without getting injured, without getting tired, or without feeling any sort of pain. Running up a hill can be very, very easy, but we make hills our enemy. So here's a few tips on basically how to make running really enjoyable on any incline. So here's the example of how you'll see runners running up a hill um, and what we're going to show you is just a couple of really really simple points to prevent against any injury and to not get tired going up a hill. So what do people typically do when they run up a hill? One thing is they'll really lift their knees high. So you'll see here left knees high, right knees high, left knees high. So they're really trying to bring those knees way too high. At that point the hip flexors are really really shortening obviously as we flex really high. Then as we bend, we're then pushing off and suddenly they're lengthening. So your hip flexors are taking a huge whack. What else are we going to be doing? So you see a lot of runners, they really land and far out in front of the hips. They're trying to pull themselves forwards. When we contact in front of the hips, the knee bends and the muscles shorten. We then need to spring off using the calf, using the hamstrings, losing the glutes to create that phase of movement. So we'll see it again. So it's knees up, landing in front of the hips knees bend and then that push and you'll see it one after another huge amount of power being used but what happens when a muscle shortens and lengthens more it requires more oxygen to be used and to respire and if we're unable to meet that demand we start to produce lactate as a byproduct and that's when we start to get stiff running up a hill so this is exactly why you'll see runners looking incredibly tired as they run up a hill and everyone would have feel, felt it themselves if you set up set off running up a hill with using the wrong muscle groups or using too much power you get very very tired very very quickly so what I wanted to show you some really really simple tips without having to lift the knees use power and moving those arms pumping the body to create that movement because the example here on the left it will get you up a hill once or twice quite well but then after that you're going to get very very tired so here's an example of how you can make running up a hill very easy the first thing to look at is the hips so one thing you'll see here on the right hand side on the left hand side is when I'm bringing it forward the knees are really really hyper flexing so bringing the knees high is consequently making me flex through the knees to around 130 degrees when we do that then often that causes us to sink into our lower body uh, and we have to use that added power. So keeping those hips nice and straight, that helps us to take a lot of weight off that lower body so we don't have to use as much power. So a way you can achieve that is by really, really thinking about picking up your hips, keeping nice and straight through your abdominals and almost reach up as well through the chest and pulling your head towards the sky. So that's the one point getting good length, so being as tall as possible. The second thing is, um, a lot of people activate all the muscles in their lower body and use power. The actual key to running up a hill is turning off the power, all of the muscle groups so they're really, really relaxed. So as well as lengthening through the hips and through the chest and creating that height, what I'm also focusing on as well is making my legs really relaxed. So that's what I refer to as my jelly legs. So I'm relaxing my feet, I'm relaxing my quads, I'm relaxing my calves and I'm not pushing. So the question is, if you're not using power, how do you get up a hill? An example of that is through what's called eccentric muscle contraction. So concentric muscle contraction, the muscles shorten. That's what you'll see here. Then suddenly you push off, they lengthen. And what's happening is the muscles shorten and lengthen. They're requiring more oxygen to be used. They're burning through your glycogen stores. That's why you hit the wall. That's why you get very, very stiff and get a lot of injuries. You'll get your calf pulls running up a hill, hamstring pulls, um, and also require a lot of recovery time. An example of how I describe the third element, as well as keeping that length and relaxing the lower body, is what I refer to as my stepper machine. So on a stepper machine, what runners, what people do is, they're basically just straightening through the knee. So you'll see here, when I contact the ground, you'll see the knees popping to about 135 degrees. As I aim to keep my hips up, and I just bring the knee back at point of contact, the most bent they're really getting through here is about 150 degrees. So all I'm focusing on, instead of my knees bending and flexing, which you'll see here, and the muscles shortening, I focus on at point of contact, bringing the knee back 
So I'm almost straightening through the leg. So there's no point where the knee is actually bending at all. So I don't need to use that power. So how I'm propelling myself upwards up a hill is basically by straightening through my lower body. So my knees are coming almost back slightly without locking and that's causing the leg to extend and create that propulsion. So those three points are simply getting as much height as possible, lengthening through the hips and chest. The second point, really relax this lower body so they feel like jelly, almost like pieces of string dangling down from the hips. And that third point, imagining I'm on a stepper machine. So you can't achieve that if you're not getting the length through your hips, so you're getting as high as possible and you're just lengthening through the body. So instead of reaching out, knee bend and push, what I'm focusing on is those short strides and just lengthening by the knee almost coming backwards at point of contact and that's bringing me up the hill without having to use any pushing uh, motion so without using my calves without using my hamstrings and it prevents against energy it also means that your demand for oxygen doesn't increase so your heart rate won't rise and your breathing rate won't change and it means you can keep running up and down hills without tiring and of course creating injury so this is will from the running injury free revolution please check out more videos at www.riffrev.com